guys, good morning. It is the first week of July, and so I thought we'd get started on doing kind of a July, our first July, first official summer garden tour. So I don't know if I'm gonna do other garden tours in July, but I wanted to at least get this one in. So my last garden tour I did two weeks ago, and a lot has happened. Uh, we started to get our harvest in, a lot of stuff is blooming. Things are just kind of going wild in the garden, and this is my favorite time of year. So I have a lot to show you. Let's start in our normal spot with the blackberries. So the exciting thing that's happening with the blackberries right now is they're turning black and they are super close to being ripe. We've been waiting. So let me show you what they look like now. So we still have a lot of berries that are green and in various shades of pink and red, but then we're starting to get ripe ones. And so we've been tasting them and these, they're still a little too shiny. We're waiting for them to dull like this one. So this one might actually be ready. So they started to turn black about a week ago, I wanna say, and Andrew's tried a few, and he said that they were still really, really sour, but they hadn't dulled out yet. And so how you know blackberries are ripe is when the shininess goes away and they started to become a little duller looking, that's when they're really like sweet instead of tart. I think we might have two that are either ripe or close to ripe right here. So that's really exciting. Next up, we have our herb bed here with a bunch of just random potatoes we're growing in pots. Uh, we kind of do this every year and it works really well for us. We actually really like growing potatoes in pots. But the main stuff that's going on here is we're starting to get the se seeds from the things that we let bolt. So this is um, cilantro. And so these are now coriander seeds that we can use for cooking and you can see that they're pretty laid over now so we're going to harvest these and then the green onion seeds which are these guys so we clipped a few off already but you can tell these are done because you'll actually be able to see the little black seeds popping out and then you just kind of shake them off see here's one where you can see the little black seeds they just kind of open up and the seeds fall right out here in our apricot tree, um, it's been kind of suffering a little bit, I think, because of the heat. We had a our heat first heat wave, but I've been seeing this apricot here. Let me see if it's ready. Oh yeah, that's too ready. So that was on there way too long. It's very soft, but this is one of the very few apricots that we have this year. So yeah, that one might not be very good. We'll see. And then right next to our apricot tree, we have our peach tree, which is pretty much done for the year. There's some fruit at the very top that we haven't been able to get to yet, but we've been intentionally just clearing all the fruit off of it. Like the good fruit, the bad fruit, all that kind of stuff. And we've gotten 16 pounds of peaches off of it, which is pretty wild. And then next to that, we have our grape arch, which is doing really well. There's now a family of birds that live in here, which is really great. <laughs> and uh, We've been very entertained watching them fight the squirrels, but uh, the grapes are starting to get a little bit bigger and they're also starting to change color a little bit. So I don't know if you can really see that. They are still green, but some of them are starting to get a little bit tint of red. There's a lot of grapes in here. Oh. oh, I think I hear chicks. Okay, let's leave them alone so we don't stress the moms out. Mama bird out too much. And then here are some of our citrus trees. Um, they are just kicking along. There's not much to see with them right now in this time of year but the fruit is slowly getting bigger. Uh, we did notice the leaves are getting a little bit yellow, so it might be time to fertilize these again. I think these are some of the ones that get fertilized once a month. The little clementines on here are starting to get a little bit bigger. So you can see some of them are bigger than others, but yeah, so they're starting to get a good size. Over here on our back tomato trellis, the tomatoes are all doing really well. A little pumpkin in the corner is doing really well too. It's kind of doubled in size since the last tour, I think. 
So it's looking really, really good. These are Amish paste tomatoes. And I mean, they're starting to get a really good size. I think this one is the biggest Amish paste we've ever grown. And so they're looking really healthy and they're starting to get taller. Those are all Amish paste. And then in the middle here, we have super sweet 100 cherry tomatoes. And the exciting part here is they are starting to change color. So that is gonna be our first uh, super sweet 100 cherry tomato of the season, which is really exciting. So far, we've only gotten the golden nuggets and those are really good, but I'm excited to have the red. And you can see here, there's more that are starting to blush and change color. And then down here, these are all Roma tomatoes. And so they're starting to get a good size too. And so far we haven't seen any blossom end rot or anything like that. So we've been crossing our fingers that all of these tomatoes end up really good. Over here in the beds, we have our first zucchini plant. This thing is massive. This is the healthiest zucchini plant we've ever had. And we have been getting giant zucchini off of it, mostly because I've missed a few, but uh, even like one day of missing them have turned them into gigantic baseball bat looking things. But we're getting about four or five zucchini a day which is a lot, especially for two people. And uh, one thing that started to happen last week or a couple days ago is the okra started to flower. And yesterday we pulled off our first two okra. So I think this one, this one's about the size that we wanna pick ours at. So the thing about okra, which it's pretty similar for things like zucchini and cucumber, is once they start going, you kind of want to check them once a day, if not twice a day, because they grow really, really fast. And with okra, this is actually the seed pod too. And so if you leave it on there too long, it gets really hard and you, you don't really want to eat it. It's like very woody. But um, when they're small like this, you can cut them up and what we like to do is we like to make like gumbo or etouffee and put them in that. Um, a lot of people do fried okra in the South and I, we do like that. We don't fry a ton of food at home, uh, but we have tried it and it's very good. Uh, some people eat okra raw, that's not my bag, <laughs> but some people love it and swear by it. Um, the other thing about okra at this size is it is kind of slimy on the inside and so there is that, that's a texture thing that I'm, I'm just not a fan of, but cooked okra in things like gumbo or etouffee or, you know, any of the, the things from my Louisiana roots, I'm really into. And so we only have four okra plants this year. We've grown more in the past, but they grow so fast and we, we end up getting enough to make the dishes that we want to make, especially for two people. So it works out really well. Our peppers are starting to get a really good size which is nice and it looks like they're starting to slowly change color uh, this one has a little bit of sun damage which is not great but um, a lo lot of what I wanted to do was kind of interplant enough with other things that would give them a little bit of shade without completely crowding them out so that they'd be a little bit more protected from things like this since I'm still trying to figure out how to grow peppers really well and have the plants actually bush out. So anyway, we will have some that have some scald like that, but overall we have a lot of peppers that I've seen in the last week. So we always have to check our cucumber plants on both sides, just because it's really easy to miss some. But you see like these two little guys here, they'll be ready in like a day or two. It's actually really fast. Here we have cucumber that has kind of taken over this tomato cage that has a, it's a pepper cage. There's a little pepper in there. And so I'm kind of using these as a little bit of shade for this plant, but I also have to be careful because they will completely just like choke it out. But you can see there's a lot more there's peppers down there. And so we have, we have a lot, they're coming in, which is really great. 
This is a Thai basil that I grow it just to let it do this. Pollinators really love it and I love how that looks. And you can still actually eat it while it's flowered like this. And we do, um, we put it in a little bit of Thai food that we make, but I think it's just really pretty. Same with this amaranth here. We grow it just because it's beautiful. Oh, here is an okra flower, if you've never seen one before. They're very pretty. And then that'll close off and then turn into an okra pod. Here's another one of our zucchini plants. It's doing really well. This one's not quite as healthy as the one in the back over there. You can't see it from here, but it's right behind that amaranth. This one isn't quite as healthy as that one, but it's still really, really solid. And so what I've mostly been doing is just trimming off the lower leaves that have gotten a little brown and stuff like that. But for the most part, I've just kind of left it and it's doing its thing. So here we have two different cucumber plants. There's an Armenian white cucumber. And um, I think this one here is a Telegraph Improved. I have to get in there and actually look at the fruit to find out. And let's see if there's anything to harvest. So I always have to wear gloves for this just because it is very pokey on my skin. Same thing with the zucchini. It actually like itches a little bit. Kind of reminds me of old fiberglass um, where it just itches a little bit. But I don't like coming in here with my bare hands. So let's see if we see anything. I did harvest off of these yesterday. So there might not be anything ready. But like I said, I always have to check just because it's so easy to miss stuff. Okay. So I don't see anything on these, but we have other plants. So we'll check those too when we get to them. And then another thing that I do while I'm in here is I always have tendrils like this that are starting to attach to other things. And so I always just kind of like put them back on the trellis just so that they can grow up the trellis as much as possible. I don't mind stuff attaching to other things. Uh, sometimes I let it go, but for the most part, I want them to go up the trellis first and then I kind of let them go wild and crazy later. So next to the two cucumbers, we have uh, some zinnias. This is a uh, Moulin Rouge zinnia, and we have cut a few of these off for bouquets and stuff, which has been really fun. And uh, this one, I need to deadhead this because this one's pretty done. Oh, and you know what? See, this right here <laughs> is why I have to check the plants every single day from multiple angles because I was just standing over there and completely missed that. So let's go grab that guy. All right, and now in the middle bed here, we have amaranth in the corner. We have some pretty awesome straw flowers here. I'm kind of obsessed with these. It's so cool. I've never grown this before. This is the first time I've grown these. And we have this pretty orange color now too. Let's see if I can dig it out of the cucumbers. so pretty and then there's a some yellow guys down here so yeah I really like straw flowers these are pretty awesome these are I think Senora zinnias um, they've been coming in really nicely and we've used a couple of these for bouquets too and this is exactly what I wanted I wanted them to kind of like stick out and add a little bit of color in between the different uh, archways. So let's see if we see anything in here. Yeah, here's a little guy. This is an Armenian white. Um, don't see anything. Oh, no, nope. there's one. Oh yeah, I think that one's big enough to get. So let's see what else we find. Yeah. 
That's all I see on this side, but we'll check when we get to the other side of the trellis too. And the other thing that I want to show you is that this, at least this side of the cucumbers has made it all the way to the top of this trellis, which I'm obsessed with. And then this right here is an Autumn Beauty sunflower and it hasn't opened yet, but it's massive and I'm really excited for it to open whenever it's ready. We have more peppers down here that are doing really, really well. Um, there's some, I think there's an Italian and an Ejibarski, and these are both habanadas. I know that because this one's labeled, but everything's doing really well in here. There's some more peppers. And then this is a noodle bean flower. And we've started to actually get noodle beans. We picked our first two a couple days ago. And one of the volunteer plants uh, that <laughs> we didn't account for, I think it came in our soil, uh, that we think is a pea eggplant. It's doing really well. And it is flowering and fruiting. So we haven't decided if we're actually going to try and eat this first, but we are leaving it just to see what it does. Because it's kind of a cool experiment. We left two of these plants in the garden. And then here is the trellis I'm super obsessed with. Let's look at that. So this trellis, the noodle beans have touched in the middle, which I'm super excited about. And so pretty soon, because this is also flowering now, we're hopefully going to have noodle beans hanging down, which is my dream for this. And you can see this guy's gone a little rogue and he's growing in the amaranth, but sometimes I just kind of let things do what they want and then eventually put them somewhere. But I think it's kind of funny. Here's some more noodle bean flowers. And then right behind it, those are very young noodle beans. And there's some more down here. And we let them get even a little bit bigger than this. Uh, they get a little bit thicker and we kind of wait a little bit so that we get more food off of them but you can see they're starting to come in everywhere and i just think these are really pretty they're used in a lot of asian cuisine um, we eat a lot of asian food but uh, i really like these and we get the burgundy ones mostly so that they're easy to spot and they're really pretty one other thing that's happening here with our, our cucumbers is, you know, they, they kind of find their own way. And so this cucumber here has decided that it wants to grow up the sunflower. And you can see there's another one behind it right here. So this cucumber plant is a Persian gherkin. And um, they tend to not do super well in our hot climate. Some people do make it work, but we're still figuring it out. We've had a lot of bad luck with cucumbers and them being like just really bitter and gross and stuff like that. And so this is, I think the second time that we've tried these plants, we tried them in our old house and our old garden too. And that year we couldn't eat any of them. We kept trying and trying. We grew a lot of cucumbers. None of them were edible. And so what I've been doing is we've been watering more, just the cucumbers we've been watering more because of the heat that we've had the last few days. But I'm also taking them really young, hoping that that helps with them uh, not getting bitter as fast. So I'm actually going to clip these two, even though they're still really small. Uh, we've been eating them this size, this size. And so far, our cucumbers have actually been edible, which has been really great. And so we're still testing that, though, because we're still definitely figuring out the amount of water that they need and all of that. So the other thing about these cucumbers is you can see they are super spiky, but the spikes actually rub off pretty well. And so I can actually rub them off with my glove. I wouldn't do this with my bare hands just because I am not a fan, but um, you can do this with gloves on. Uh, you can do it with a brush when you wash them, but you see the spikes kind of come right off. So I just checked the back of these cucumber plants just to see if I missed anything. And, oh, yep, here's one right here. See, again, 
Oh, and well, no, that guy I might leave for another day, but that one I definitely want to get. And this is exactly why I check from multiple angles because it's really hard for me to see them all. So let me go grab that guy. It looks like it'll be, probably be easier to do from the other side. Okay, got it. So the other thing that's giving me hope about our cucumbers this year and making me feel like we're getting better at it is the fact that some of the ones that have gotten a little bit bigger, they've been straight. And so this looks more like the cucumbers that other people are successfully growing. Um, a lot of times what happens with ours is they'll grow kind of like in a non-uniform way. And so maybe one side of it will be big and then it tapers into a really small, weird shape or they're, they're like curved. We've got a lot of those too. And so the fact that we just had three 100 degree days in a row and I've been able to pull off a couple that look like this um, makes me feel like at least we're in the right direction. So what we've been doing is before we eat any of these cucumbers that's not an Armenian white, we've been cutting it in half and trying one piece right out the very middle of it to see if it's good before we put it in any kind of food just because we don't want to take the risk of like making something with really bitter cucumbers because it's they taste like if you bit into a pill it's really awful and so we've been kind of like taste testing all of them <laughs> right in the middle but it gives me hope that they're at least the right shape now which we were barely getting before so we're getting better every year we're getting better and this is our one dahlia that actually flowered and yesterday andrew was actually able to take one of these dahlias and put it in a bouquet for a friend which was really great because so far they've been really little um, and i've just been kind of letting them go i have been deadheading a little bit here but you can see there's still there's some more now that need to come out but that is really pretty then we have some peas back here these peas are or sorry these are blue leg pole beans they're not doing as well as i thought they would i thought they would be much taller and the leaves have gotten a little strange and discolored in here but they're still trying and there's a lot of flowers on them now so i am hoping that we'll start to get stream beans pretty soon here then this is one of our honey nut squashes and it's it's doing pretty well there's not a ton of fruit on here but we don't usually get a ton of fruit on these we we do still really like them and so yeah this one's doing pretty pretty good and then this is the second um pea what we think is a pea eggplant that i left in just to see what it does because it's on the end here and another amaranth I just realized my mic wasn't plugged in, so hopefully the sound is better now. Um, on this bed, on the end, we have a yellow squash that is ready. And for these yellow squash plants, we've been getting probably two to three a day. So not as crazy as this zucchini, but still way more than two people need. And so we've been able to start giving some away, but we're definitely freezing a lot of them. So I'm going to grab that one right now. The next to the squash, we have more of the uh, honey nut squash. And this one isn't doing as well as the other one, but it's still doing okay. But it has one little, oh, I, still, I still have gloves on. It has a couple little fruit there. And actually, I'm gonna leave this glove on because there's another squash plant coming up right here. And then we have more beans, same thing. These are blue lake pole beans. And we're just waiting for them to kind of get going still. This is a gigantic yellow squash. Um, it is very happy in this spot. It actually goes across to the other side of this bed. And this is a four foot bed. So this thing is crazy happy. And let's see if we got anything in here today. We kind of have to check both sides on this one. Uh, that one I'm probably going to leave till tomorrow. And then what's going on over there? Oh yeah, there's one on the other side there that we'll get when we get over there. But this thing is the healthiest yellow squash for sure that we've ever had. Um, we tried yellow squash for the first time last year and it did horribly. So this has been really great and we've gotten a ton of food off of these two plants. 
And here is, I think this is a butternut. Yeah, that's a butternut that was planted later than everything else. So we're waiting for it to get going. And then this is the other side of the noodle beans. And then here is the very front of that bed. So we have more Thai basil. We have um, some marigolds on the corner here. Some more sweet peppers, different varieties. Uh, more zinnias. And you can see there now, there is that squash I was just talking about. So we're gonna grab that guy. So one thing I have noticed in the last, I wanna say four days of picking squash off of this plant in particular is that a lot of it, it is kind of like tinged green. Let me pick this so I can show you. Oh, I can't reach in there with the clippers, so I'm just gonna twist it and hope for the best. Okay, yeah. So the thing about yellow squash is, I did break this one even though I did clip it. Um, the thing about the yellow squash is as soon as it starts uh, to fruit, it's yellow the whole time. And so it doesn't like change color or anything like that. The thing we've noticed about this plant is that in the last few days, they've started to have a little bit of green on them, almost like it was cross pollinated with the zucchini. And they still taste fine, um, but it, it's starting to look very much like a zucchini in certain places. So I thought that was really interesting that it's, it's just this plant and it's not all of them on this plant either. But um, I don't know what causes that. I don't know if it actually was crossed or uh, or what. So we need to do some more research on that, but I do think this is pretty cool. And it's still really good food. And then down here in our hot pepper corner, um, this is where we have all of our jalapenos and poblanos. We are starting to get peppers down here too, which is really great. Last year, our jalapenos were actually the very first to um, fruit out of all of our peppers. And that wasn't the case this year, but they are coming in strong. The thing with our jalapenos is we actually wait until they're a little bit red and we pick them then. Okay, so before we go to the next section of the garden, um, I'm going to empty out my root apron because there's a lot of stuff in here and it's starting to get heavy with all this squash. So let's see what we got here. Yep, looks like everything. So this is where we're at so far. In the back in the middle of the garden here, our pumpkin patch is doing pretty well. We planted this, I want to say two, maybe three weeks ago, but I think it was about two weeks ago. And we have sugar pie pumpkins on this side, which are kind of a smallish pumpkin that are really good for, for pies and things like that. Uh, we also decorate with them. And then over there, we have Howden pumpkins, which are supposed to be more of a jack-o'-lantern size. So these are doing really well. I've been watering them a little bit more with the heat just because these plants have been small, but um, they're really starting to take off, which is, which is really great. And then next up, we have our cut flower garden experiment in the middle here. And these, there are three uh, four by eight foot beds. And so these Cosmos are great and they're pretty tall. So you can see they're about chest height with me and I'm five, five and a half. So these things are, are pretty tall and great. Um, I have been deadheading them a little bit. They need a lot more deadheading, but every time I do take off the old flowers, we get a ton more. And these have been really great for bouquets and stuff. So I've been really liking these. And this, this variety is candy stripe. And I like it because they also come in like a few different shade variations, even on the same plant, which is really great. Right next to those, we have some new straw flowers. Look how pretty that is. That is so nice. And then there's another variety here. I just, I love these. And then our Larkspur. Uh, this is blooming for the second time this season. I, once it bloomed the first time, I cut 
all of the old blooms off. There were like three of them. And it looks like not only did it come back, but it came back with more blooms, which was really great. And you can see the grass has really taken over in this bed. We've always had a problem with grass in the back here. And so we're gonna probably just tarp this whole thing in the winter time. And we have some uh, snapdragons here and a, looks like a wasp. And there are more cosmos and our zinnias. Let me show you our zinnias. They've been doing really well. This is our main zinnia patch. Um, a lot of the zinnias, this was actually the worst zinnia year for me, but these are doing really well over here. So we have three different kinds. We have the Signora zinnia, or no, sorry. We have the Moulin Rouge zinnia. We have a giant purple, and then we have the Signora zinnias. And I think this is an older one, but it's a good example of what they look like with the multiple layers. They're kind of cupcakey, which I really love. So these are all doing really well. And then back to this first bed, we have tomatoes here. These are Roma tomatoes and they are covered in really good sized tomatoes actually. And so this is really great. And then next to the zinnias, we have these um, golden nugget cherry tomatoes. And I've pulled tomatoes off of this every day for the past week. And it looks like there's still more, which is great. This is a determinate variety. And so it makes sense why they're kind of all ripening at the same time. But these have been really, really good. All right, and then our last three 16 foot beds. So this is another zucchini plant and it looks like, oh yeah, we got some fruit to take off of these too. Here's some more peppers and you can see here, this one has pretty bad sun scald. Actually move this leaf right here to see if we can use it as shade for a little bit. But um, this pepper probably needs to be taken off because the sun scald spot is so big. And then these are two tomatillo plants and we saw yesterday we have tomatillos. So I've never grown tomatillos before successfully and uh, you know they're ready when they kind of like fill up the husk, this like papery outside. But this is exciting. There's a couple on here. There's another one down there. So yeah, this is really great. And these are covered with flowers. Last year was the first year that we tried to grow tomatillos and we didn't know that you needed more than one so that they could cross pollinate each other. So we got a ton of flowers. We had a really beautiful plant and not a single tomatillo. So this year we learned better and we have two plants and it is working. I see another one down here. So this is pretty great. We're gonna have tomatillos. Next to those, we have some bush beans that we put in just to fill in the space. And um, they haven't flowered yet or produced anything, but they are getting, they are getting close, I think. On the end of this bed, we have more Super Sweet 100 cherries that are doing really well. And they're starting to really take off. I do need to come in and clean up the bottom leaves on these plants again. But overall, these are very good looking plants. Then we have another cucumber plant over here. This side of the garden gets more shade, so I really wanted to try and put cucumbers over here too to see if they do any better. This is a pumpkin right here. This is a sugar pie pumpkin, so one of the smaller ones. And then down here, we have beans. Um, I think these are the, the Blue Lake pole beans, and they are much happier on this side of the garden. The leaves, you can see, are perfect on this side. Um, and then there's like a, there's a basil plant that we've been picking off of really good in here. This one was one of the few that hasn't flowered yet, and so the flavor's still really good on it. So we're trying to keep it that way as long as possible. These are noodle beans in this middle bed here. And um, I tried to do an experiment to get more basil here, and I just didn't water it consistently enough, so none of those seeds came up. That's okay. We have one random leek back there. Uh, that is the most successful I've ever been with leeks, which is hilarious because in the winter, I filled up this whole middle section with leeks, and then we had to bury them all <laughs> to fill the beds. And so that is my that is my one leak and I've tried leeks for I think 
two years now. And then over on this side, oh, look at that. That is a watermelon. That's a yellow watermelon. This is a seed that we saved from our old garden. So that's exciting. I see a couple little fruit on there too, but that's the biggest one. So that's really exciting. And in the middle here, we have more peppers. We have another Mulan Rosinia. These are more pumpkins here. And then we have the Space Filler Trio Bush Beans down here again. On the end of this bed here, we have two different slicer tomatoes that we got from the farmer's market. This one right here is a Hungarian heart, and then that one is a yellow brandy wine. The interesting thing about these two tomatoes, these are the only two plants that I didn't start from seed myself that I actually bought into the garden. Um, Andrew bought a couple too, actually, but these were the two that I, I really wanted. And the interesting thing about these two plants is these starts were way bigger than mine when I put them in. Uh, you can see them in old garden tours and old videos, but you know, I had these like little dinky kind of sickly looking starts and these things were a good like foot, foot and a half tall when I put them in. And so they greatly outpaced all of the tomato starts that I had when I put them in. So I was very, very excited, very, very hopeful. The thing is now, which is really funny, is one of them at least has gotten very sick. And so I have trimmed off a lot of these leaves that are like yellowing and stuff like that you can see right here but it has way more and so you might find this in your garden too that sometimes you know even if you buy these like really healthy plants from like a nursery or wherever you get them sometimes as the season goes on your plants will actually catch up to them and sometimes like this one they might end up sicker and it might be the variety, it might be a bunch of different things, right? Because cherry tomatoes tend to grow faster than, um, than paste tomatoes and, and even those tend to grow faster than slicers. So there is that to take into account. But this plant in particular has been really, really slow and it's not even as fast as the slicer next to it and it's much sicker and there's barely any fruit on it. So I haven't given up on it yet but uh, it's not great over here <laughs> with this plant. And so that is something that I think can be just worth knowing, but also kind of encouraging to know that like, even if it seems like your starts are smaller than other people's or they're behind or something like that, and you feel like your garden's just not gonna do as well, a lot of times it'll catch up. And you know, sometimes you'll bring in something that looks like perfect and spend money on it. And it won't do as well as the stuff that you did yourself right even with with less experience and less expertise so that is my my little ted talk on <laughs> encouragement for that is that you can you can start plants like you can literally start plants that are not doing very well and don't look very good and don't look like everybody else's on youtube or instagram or whatever and still end up with a really really beautiful garden which is kind of what i've been doing for the last few years so anyway, I wanted to talk about that for a second. Um, I need to see if I can clean this plant up a little bit more. It's gonna be taking off a lot of its leaves. Um, I might end up having to just completely take this plant out because it has started to get the plant next to it a little bit sick, but I've been able to take those leaves off. Um, but we'll kind of see, you know, I also don't want this spreading to my other very healthy tomatoes that I did start myself. So we'll see, it's all an experiment. So here's a closer look at, you know, all the yellowing and stuff of this, this plant here. It just doesn't look good at all. And then next to it, this slicer is doing really well. And it's had a little bit of yellowing. Um, there's been some leaves like this that I've clipped off. Um, but for the most part, it's hanging on there, hanging in there. But uh, this one has been doing a lot better. So I don't know if it's a variety thing. These are both varieties I've never grown before. Uh, and I tend to not grow very many slicers. I just wanted to try these, but that is a, a good thing to just be able to note. In the middle here, we have more peppers and these are eggplants. And this one's starting to flower, which is really exciting. So usually we have eggplant way before this, but these 
uh, starts were very, very small <laughs> and unhealthy when I put them in. And we also had weird weather for them. So it'll be nice to have eggplant again. And these are the kind of like long purple variety. Here we have another honey nut squash plant. This one's doing actually really well. It seems really happy in this corner. Here's that watermelon we saw. So there's the big one right there. And then there's a bunch of little guys on here too. So let's see, here's another one. There's another one back there. Where'd he go? Right there. So hopefully this means we'll get a lot of watermelon. And then there is a yellow squash there that we've gotten. We've gotten a couple good sized fruit off of that one. Um, but I actually like that it's a little bit behind because we have a lot. <laughs> now on this bed, we have more peppers um, and we have another watermelon that's coming in on this trellis here. And we have another zinnia and then this happened in the last two days. These are junior yellow sunflowers and they all started opening in the last two days. This one was the first one to open and I, sunflowers are my favorite flower, so I'm obsessed with this. And we can see it from our window, which is great. Look at these, they're so cute. This makes me so happy. So now that these are blooming, I'm gonna go through the garden and just put a bunch more sunflower seeds everywhere so that we can have some later in the season too. And you can see there's more heads here going through the cattle panel trellis. So this is, this is beautiful. This is two sunflowers right here. So I, I love this. I spent a lot of time staring at it. <laughs> and then we have another little watermelon there. Well, here's another basil that hasn't flowered yet. So we've been pulling a lot off of this one. We made some really good pesto yesterday out of basil we grew and garlic we grew, which is really great. And then there's another little watermelon. Here is a amaranth to frame this side of the trellis. More peppers, two more eggplants. And then this is a gigantic sunflower, which I'll show you on the other side. And then we have a couple just really small, um, what are these? I think these are Amish paste. Yeah, just really small Amish paste tomatoes. We have gotten some uh, zucchini off of this plant. It's not as healthy as the other ones, but that's okay. I'm just kind of leaving it. Oh, and then right here. So if you've never seen one before, this is a ladybug larva. It looks nothing like a ladybug, but that, that is a ladybug or a future ladybug. It's wild, right? And at the top of that gigantic sunflower, this bloomed yesterday. The light's not right for it now, but it is really pretty. This is an autumn beauty sunflower and it's at least eight feet tall. Uh, here's a garden dog and this is our second trellis of this one is all romas so we have some basil and different herbs and stuff here in the back but really we're just growing this for the tomatoes and this thing all of these are loaded up too and they're looking really healthy it is time to clean up the bottoms again because we got some leaves touching but these plants are doing really well and then at the bottom of this apple tree this borage exploded so this is one of the few plants that we actually purchased uh, Andrew bought this as a little itty bitty start and it has just gone everywhere. This thing was like this big when we put it in. <laughs> so it's gone bonkers and I'm starting to see bees on it, which is exciting and the whole reason why we bought it. So right here, we intentionally didn't put a tomato plant in front of the uh, apple tree right here. Just because we didn't know how tall these were going to get, these romas will get four to six feet tall usually. And so in case they got six feet tall, we didn't want them to completely shade out this apple tree. So there's a blank spot there on purpose. We have a little marigold. And then this is a Howden pumpkin. And it's doing really well. This is the biggest pumpkin that we have actually. And it was planted around the same time as all the other ones. 
but he's very happy in this spot. And then there were just a couple extra snapdragons that I put in here. And I'm not like picking off of these or anything like that. It was just because I had extra and I needed to put them in. I needed to put them somewhere. So there we go. That's the garden tour for the first week of July. We got pretty good haul. Uh, we've been getting actually more than this the last couple days. Uh, but considering I got a haul bigger than this yesterday and the day before, this is really good. Uh, especially, like I said, it's it's two people and we are preserving a lot and then sharing a lot. So, and sharing the produce from the garden is my favorite part. So now I get to share produce and also flowers, which I really, really love. I'm so happy I got to share this with you also because this time of year is when the garden looks amazing, but it's also the hottest time of year. And so if we do have people over and stuff like that, it's really too hot to come out here in the middle of the day. And so the garden is really most enjoyable in the early morning and really late afternoon, evening, like really evening and morning is best, you know? And so we don't get to share it too much with, you know, our, our friends that come over and stuff like that. So I'm really grateful that I get to share it with you and that <laughs> I get to walk through it with you. And it's bring, this brings me so much joy to be able to do these tours and for other people to be interested in them. Cause I also get to, you know, geek out in a way that not everyone who comes to our house wants to hear every detail about our garden. Uh, but this is really great for me because I get to geek out about it and, you know, just talk about the things that are different, the things that are interesting and, you know, also the things that aren't going very well and why I think that is. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a great week. I hope you have a great July <laughs> and let me know what's happening in your garden. Even if your garden is a pot on a patio, I think that all of that is beautiful and I want to hear about it. So let me know in the comments below how your garden is doing and I will talk to you later. Bye.